To get started, simply navigate to the registration portal at ix.storej.io. You can also find a link to this site in the TrueNAS UI under Adding Cloud Credentials. Once you go here, you'll be directed to the StoreJ registration portal for your nearest region and asked to enter your name, email address, and create a password. Once you've done this, you'll need to verify your email address through a link sent. When that's finished, sign back in to the StoreJ dashboard and you'll be prompted to select from one of three account types. You can start with a free account of 25 gigabytes and at any time, upgrade to the iX StoreJ starter package or a professional account. With a pro account, you pay as you grow only for what's used beyond 25 gigabytes at a rate of $4 per terabyte per month. Pay as you grow with a large scale public cloud can be five to 10 times this price. TrueNAS users can also get a special discount with the iX StoreJ starter package. By paying up front, you can use up to five terabytes per month for only $150 for a period of a year, which represents a $125 discount. Starter package users that grow beyond five terabytes will pay the usual professional rate of $4 per terabyte per month for extra consumption. Once you've selected a plan, you'll be prompted to get started with either the web browser or the Uplink CLI. We'll get started in our tutorial by choosing the web browser option on the left. Next, it's time to set up your encryption passphrase. For our example, we'll let StoreJ generate a new 12-word passphrase, but if desired, you can supply your own that you've created. Note that StoreJ does not know or store your passphrase ever, so make sure you save it and keep it in a safe place. If it's lost, neither iX nor StoreJ can retrieve any data encrypted with it. You can reveal this passphrase, copy it to your clipboard, or download it as a plain text file, but just make sure you've recorded it safely before continuing to the next step. Once you've completed your encryption setup, you'll be brought to the StoreJ dashboard. Scroll to the bottom of the page to create your first bucket to store your data with the New Bucket button. Give your new bucket a name using lowercase characters only and click Create Bucket. You'll be brought to the StoreJ web interface again. While you could upload your files manually through the browser interface, TrueNAS has a built-in method to replicate an entire data set or folders directly to StoreJ. All we need to do is enable it. For our next step, we'll set up the credentials that our TrueNAS system will use. Choose Access on the StoreJ dashboard and then Create S3 credentials. Choose a name for these credentials to identify them within your StoreJ dashboard. You'll be prompted to accept the use of server-side encryption which can be used in addition to TrueNAS encryption that's applied before uploading your files. This S3 user can also be limited to specific permissions or specific storage buckets within your StoreJ account. In our example, we'll allow all permissions for the user, but only for the one bucket that we created earlier. StoreJ will also let you specify an expiration date for these permissions if you want to limit the time period you'll allow this user to have access. Proceed to the next step where you'll be given the option to set up yet another separate encryption passphrase if desired. If you set a separate passphrase, these credentials will encrypt their data with a separate set of keys in order to separate your TrueNAS synchronization data from any other data you might upload to the same bucket. But this will also prevent TrueNAS from downloading any data that was uploaded prior to its creation. For our configuration, let's leave our current passphrase in place as we don't need to separate out our data to this level yet. On the final screen, you'll be asked to confirm the name, permissions, buckets, and end date of the new credentials. Make sure you're granting the right access before clicking to confirm. Once the credentials have been created, you'll be prompted to download, copy, or reveal them, similar to your main encryption passphrase earlier in the setup. Just like your encryption passphrase, StoreJ does not store or have the ability to recover your secret keys, so make sure they're recorded in a safe place before continuing. Once you've saved these credentials, it's time to enable the built-in StoreJ functionality within TrueNAS. Log into your TrueNAS dashboard and navigate to the Credentials and then Backup Credentials menu. Choose to add a new set of cloud credentials. Ensure that the provider is selected as StoreJ IX and then enter your access key ID and secret access key that you just downloaded previously. Click the Verify Credential button and ensure that these credentials are reported as valid in the UI before clicking the Save button. In your TrueNAS system, select the Data Protection menu 
and then beside Cloud Sync Tasks, choose the Add button. Give your upload task a name, and then select your Store J credentials from your Credentials drop-down menu. Since this will be an upload job to the Store J distributed cloud, set your traffic direction to a push and check that the transfer mode is set to copy. Expand your local directory tree and select one or more directories to copy from. Note that if you do select multiple folders, they must all be at the same level, or in other words, have the same parent directory. Select the bucket that you created in the StoreJ dashboard, and then select a folder inside that StoreJ bucket to use for the synchronization job, or select the root of the bucket itself. In the lower part of the job configuration, you can also configure additional encryption options if desired. StoreJ does include AES-256 encryption for your data to ensure its safety in the distributed network, but you can add an extra layer by encrypting the data on your TrueNAS machine before it even reaches the StoreJ gateway. Ensure that if you do choose this option to record both your encryption password and your encryption salt value separately and keep them in a secure location. You can also fine tune the number of transfers depending on the amount of network bandwidth, the size of individual files, and available memory on your TrueNAS system. If you're backing up a large number of small files, you might benefit from increasing the number of simultaneous transfers. But there is no single solution to optimize for all scenarios. Adjust this value slowly while monitoring your bandwidth usage and memory to find an optimal value for your situation. A bandwidth limit can also be set if you have limited internet connectivity. Once you've made any adjustments to transfer number, bandwidth limit, or other settings, click the Save button. Back on the CloudSync's dashboard, select the Dry Run button beside your new CloudSync job. This will test your access to the StoreJ bucket and simulate transferring a file, but won't actually send any data. Click Continue and confirm that the job state changes to Success. To synchronize your data for real, click the Run Now button and confirm the request with Continue. You can now switch back to the StoreJ dashboard open the bucket listing on the left, and navigate to the data bucket that TrueNAS is syncing with. You'll see all their files as they're uploaded to and distributed around the StoreJ network.